Hi, I'm Niall from Gulfstream Boat Sales. We're having a look around a Larson Cabrio 240 sports cruiser. This boat was built in 2004. It's fitted with a Meritruiser 5 litre MPI, 260 horsepower, Bravo 3 stern drive. It has 590 hours on it from new. It has been used primarily in fresh water. Comes complete with a snipe twin axle UK spec road trailer and the whole package is in lovely condition. It's been really well maintained, very well looked after and, and uh, it's a cracking little boat. We're going to take a detailed look around the boat now. We're going to show you all the features inside. We're going to show you the condition that this one's in. You can hear the engine start and running and you can see how it performs in the water as well. The idea here is to just help you to decide whether this boat might be of interest to you. Larson is a quality uh, US sports boat brand and it's built to a fairly high standard of fit and finish and that's immediately apparent whenever you take a look at the exterior of this boat. So we've got a nice stainless steel rub rail runs all the way around it. All stainless steel rails and hardware and things. Um, it's a nice rich looking boat as well and I think it's got very striking proportions. This boat's only 24 foot 7 inches long but whenever you take a look at it, because she's got it quite sleek, um, she looks almost bigger um, and certainly whenever you get inside the boat it feels like a sort of 26 footer um, but she's, um, she's only 24 foot 7, 7 inches long so she's easy to manage, easy to tow the weight is around about 26 or 2700 kg so it's legal to tow on the road and it's matched up with a, with a proper UK spec brake road trailer so this is a great boat if you're looking for something that sort of can double up as a bit of a floating caravan or maybe you want to move it around from different marinas or different harbours and things like that on the road or even take it away with you on holidays to the continent this would be ideal for, for that type of, uh, type of use. She has a 2004 boat so a few nicks and scratches here or there, here or there are going to be expected on the exterior of the boat but generally speaking she's in lovely condition. The gel coat has a lovely deep shine to it, um, stripes and, and graphics and things are in good condition. A couple of very minor marks here and there, a little scratch on the gel here. That's about the worst of it on this port side. Um, all this, the chrome uh, port light surrounds are in really good condition. The rails and the stainless steel cleats and all the stainless steel hardware, like the little shore power plug, um, fuel fill point, everything is in, uh, is in really nice condition. Um, I'm coming right down to the stern of the boat. Um, the stern corner here in the port side is unmarked. The swim platform as well, these are really susceptible to getting damaged in around marinas and things just because they're hanging out at the end of the boat. That's the first thing you're going to catch at the boat as you lose the tail end. But this one is completely unmarked and it's in really nice condition. So you can tell it's been you know, conscientious owners who've known what they're, what they're doing. We have a nice stainless steel anchor on the front of this boat. It's unusual to see on a boat of this size. It's an expensive anchor. And then taking a look up at the, the very front of the bow, the gel coat here is in great condition. The rub rail is all in really good shape. There's no signs of any trailer damage. You know, there's no marks up here from hitting the trailer whenever the boat's been brought up or off the uh, trailer. So that's a really good sign. And then the rest of the starboard side looks fantastic as well. I mean, it really doesn't look like a 2004 boat. If you get up really close, again, you'll see a couple of small little marks here and there in the gel. But the rub rail all the way down this uh, starboard side is in pristine condition. All the bow rails look really good. Again, the, the chrome surrounds on the port lights are excellent. The graphics and pinstriping and things look really good too. A um, couple of very minor scuffs just above the rail here. Um, and there is a little area of, which is previously repaired. It's not a perfect colour match, but you have to be up close to see that, and it's a pretty good job. Um, and then coming on down to the stern, the corners on this side are perfect as well, and the, uh, the swim platform's in good shape on this starboard side too. So all in all, the exterior is in beautiful condition. So we have given the boat a fresh coat of polish, just buffed her up to get her ready for sale, and we've also cleaned up the anti-fouling paint around the waterline. Now if you look in underneath, you'll see that we've left it in the original condition. So this will really need re anti foil before the start of the 2016 season. But the condition, the underlying condition of the paint is pretty good. And the hull looks good as well. Um, but whenever she gets her fresh coat all the way across the bottom, she'll look, um, look great again. So, um, but apart from that, that's really all we had to do to the boat. It was already serviced and winterized before the owner brought it to us for sale. Um, I towed it up the road, 
So towed up maybe 60 miles, so the trailer tows beautifully, the brakes are working, the wheel bearings are good, engine's running really good, um, and it's obvious that this one's been well looked after. She's ready to go to the water for 2016 season. A lot of owners moving up to a boat like this are coming from something like a bow rider or a cuddy cabin, sort of smaller sports boat, and they're used to sort of doing water sports, pulling rings and water skis and things like that, and also swimming off the back of the boat. So you'll be pleased to know that you can still continue to do that type of thing with this Larson Cabrio 240. That engine, that Mercruiser 5 litre MPI with 260 horsepower, has bags of power, it gets the boat up on the plane quickly. It's also a stepped hull. You'll notice this notch out of the hull up here. So this helps the boat get up on the plane quicker. Um, and it uh, means that you get really punchy sort of performance out of this whole package. So you can still have, you still have enough power there to pull water toys, to pull skiers, and things like that. And in combination with this extended swim platform, with an integrated three-step stainless steel board and ladder, it means that you still have that really close connection to the water. You can hop in and out of the water really easily. You can get your skis and stuff on back here. Um, you've got your central ski tow point here for, for towing your toys and your skiers from. Um, and the boat does a great job of um, you know being a water sports platform. It'll happily pull skiers all day long. That's one of the other things that, about uh, petrol powered boats. A lot of people think, I get a lot of people inquiring about diesel powered cruisers that are moving up from these smaller boats and then they start to tell me well they want to do water sports and they still want to pull rings and things like that and really diesel engines aren't really designed for that sort of use. You know they're not designed to be run at high RPM for long periods of time whereas a petrol engine it's quite happy for you to run that at full throttle or very close to it all day long. So if you're looking for a cruiser that doubles up as a bit of a sports boat and a water sports machine, then this sort of package is definitely what you want to be going for. And this Larson's really well set up to do that. Taking a look below the waterline, um, you'll see that we've touched down the antifoil and across the transom, so it's all in really good shape. The boat's fitted with a pair of trim tabs, important starboard side, so um, you can use those to level up the boat if you're running on a crosswind. And that engine, that Mercruiser 5.0 MPI, is matched up to this Bravo 3 drive leg. So she's a twin propeller, two uh, counter, counter rotating propellers on a single shaft. Um, now, the drive, this boat, as far as we know, this boat has spent the vast majority of its life in fresh water. Been in the water during the summer and then stored during the winter. You will see there's a bit of surface corrosion on the leg. And funnily enough, we see this on freshwater boats a lot more than we see it on, on, uh, on saltwater boats. The reason being, I think, is because the anodes that come from Mercruiser, although they're designed to be for fresh or salt water, I think they're biased towards salt water use and they're not as effective in fresh water. So you really can't blame it on the owners um, or lack of maintenance. It, it's really just a feature of the sort of the drive and it depends on the marina that it's in and things like that. But it's purely surface, um, a bit of surface corrosion. None of the oil seals or any of the important surfaces are affected. And if it's something that bothers you, it's quite easy to rub down and just repaint, prime it and repaint it again. So, um, but it's, this is honest, original condition, and you're seeing exactly how it is. I, it wouldn't worry me in the slightest. The drive, apart from that, is running really well. A um, couple of wee nicks out of the prop, this, this forward prop or back prop. Um, but the three blade, this smaller one here, seems, seems perfect. So again, nothing too major to worry about. And I didn't notice any vibration or anything whenever I was running the boat in the water. All the seals on the trim rams are good, the bellows are good. Um, as I said, this thing was serviced as well in November there. Um, so all the, the oil was changed in the drive. Um, and it's, a, it's a, the best drive to have with that engine. It gives the boat a really good turn of speed, gets it on plane quickly, keeps it on plane down to low speeds. You get really good um, grip through the turns and things like that. So it's uh, the, definitely the sort of power package, the preferred power package for a boat of this size. A few other quick things to point out are um, this stainless steel handrail, so that's conveniently located. So if you're climbing out of the water onto the boat, you've got that handrail for helping yourself up there. Huge big swim platform, it's easily probably about two and a half feet deep. And then we've got this integrated platform, so we've got this two tier level, and that's the full width of the transom, so it makes the boat easy to board from either side. Um, we've also got a couple of little pop up cleats back here. So whenever you're out using the boat for water sports and things, you can pop those down, it means there's no tripping hazards as people you know, use the back of the boat for getting into the water. Um, the, this has also been fitted with these weaver snap uh, davits on the swim platform, so if you have a little dinghy, you have little pads that stick onto the dinghy, 
they lock into these wee brackets and you can fold the dinghy against the back of the boat. So that's really handy if you're um, looking to use the boat with, uh, say you're going to be anchoring off in bays and you're going to be going ashore in a little dinghy, this is set up um, for that type of use. They're in perfect condition, they're well mounted, there's no cracks or, or um, any evidence, any damage around there. Uh, and these are the best quality ones to get. There's a, there's a lot of these on the market now. But Weaver Stamp are the original ones, the most expensive, but they're also the best quality, so that's the ones you want to go for. Um, so yeah, condition-wise, everything around here is fantastic. So we're going to hop up on the platform now, jump into the cockpit, and show you around. We might just take the covers down to, to let you get a better look inside the cockpit of the boat. Access into the cockpit is through this little lockable transom gate and you just come over one raised step into a nice spacious and flat single level uh, cockpit throughout here. Now this boat is only 24 foot 7 inches long um, but this cockpit would rival a lot of sort of 26 footers. You can tell that Larson have definitely biased this boat towards maximizing the outdoor space, the cockpit space, possibly at the expense of a little bit of room down in the cabin, but most owners, nine times out of ten, on this type of boat you're going to be spending most of your time out in the cockpit here. So this is going to be a, a big positive for a lot of buyers um, of this boat. So lovely spacious cockpit, it's well laid out as well. Um, we've got a, a versatile arrangement at the back end of the boat where you can either have the transom seat folded away and you just have a nice big open deck space that we have here at the moment, or with the transom seat set up you've got a forward facing bench We've also got this little two-seater rear-facing bench. You can set up the cockpit table there, and you know have a four people sitting around a table. The back end. Uh, we've got this big port side lounger. This also folds completely flat, so you can make that into a big sun pad area. And we've got a single uh, helm seat on a pedestal, well upholstered, well well bolstered, and there's a flip-up uh, bolster on it there as well. And then behind me, we have a little cockpit wet bar. So if you're preparing drinks or food up here, you've got that facility as well as a little cool box and stuff that stores over there. So it's a fantastic cockpit, probably one of the best that you'll find on a boat of this size, which is still a trailerable, easy to manage cruiser. And um, the condition of everything in here is lovely too. But we're going to take a, a more a closer look now at each of the individual areas up here, um, just give you a better idea of, of exactly uh, what you're getting here. A neat little feature in this boat is the, uh, the switch, the light switch here at the transom walkthrough. So this is wired direct to the battery. So even if you've got the isolator switch turned off, whether you're leaving the boat at, after dark or maybe you're coming into the boat after an evening at a restaurant or something, you can flick on the lights. That lights up these two blue LEDs on the swim platform. So you can see where you're stepping as you come onto the boat. And it also turns on these two backlights in the back end of the, the cockpit as well. So uh, that's a really well thought thought out feature and like I said it's wired direct to the battery so even if the isolator switch off that uh, can turn on and off those lights and they do a really good job of lighting up your entrance on onto the boat. You'll also notice we've got a pull out uh, transom shower here now it is the head's removed and it's uh, been drained for the winter but you, that's hot and cold or sorry it's just running water cold water so you can rinse yourself off after a uh, swim. Uh, coming on in through the cockpit then We've got our cool box stores in a dedicated location here, Igloo Cooler. We've got this pressurized sink with fresh running water. And just below that we have our bit of storage space. Storing odds and ends. You see we've got the, the transom shower head there. Um, and you can get some ropes and supplies and stuff in there. So the transom uh, bench arrangement is very neat on this boat. Um, Whenever the, the seat is folded away, you've got full width um, deck space here, so you can lift these carpets as well, and they're split front and back. So you, if you are, say you're fishing back here, or kids are swimming and things, and you're going to be getting water in the, the cockpit, um, you can just lift this back, this aft ca carpet here. The, the deck is all molded fiberglass, non-slip. Um, two big scuppers in the back corner, so any water does find its way in here will drain overboard. Um, and this is just a really easy to use area. You can hose it down with this transom shower to keep it clean and stuff. And if you're fishing, the covers fold forward out of the way. You've got an unhindered access all the way around the, the back end of the boat. So really nice setup. And then if you need the space for seating or you're setting up the table and you're gonna have a picnic up here, then it's really easy to fold out the seat. This folds up, the seat folds out. And we've got two little legs that fold down.
and we've got a good sized transom bench seat that will easily accommodate two adults set at a decent height so you know it's, it's low it's inside the boat even if you're sitting here whenever the boat's underway um, you get good protection from the cockpit sides the forward windscreen and you can sit facing another two adults around the table that sets up in this position here with loads of cup holders here we got a total of three cup holders there's also stainless steel handrail down here so backseat passengers have something to hold on to um, and uh, you know you don't have any cushions to fight with you don't have to find a place to put the cushion if you're taking the seat away it's just a really simple to use little setup folding out the sun pad on the port side here is similarly very easy to do you just uh, open out this support there's one little clip catch in here the on clip and then the whole thing just slides forward and folds completely flat so it's as simple as that again there's no filler cushions or anything to worry about um, all the hinges and the clips and catches are all working really well and you've got a nice big uh, full length sun lounger there on the port side which could easily double up as an extra bed for, um, for a couple of kids or an adult if you're finding that you've got a lot of people staying on board. The battery isolator switch on this boat, if I didn't tell you where it is, would be pretty hard to find I think because you don't tend to find them in this area very often but it's in behind a little seat uh, or upholstered side cushion we have got a twin isolator switch, so two batteries in this boat and we've also got our main uh, circuit breakers in there as well so neatly done, good quality guest isolator switch the clips and catches and the upholstery is all really good this port side lounger makes a great place for either reclining or just sitting whenever you're underway very good um, backrests and side cushions here on it whenever I'm sitting here I've got great protection from the windscreen because it goes up above the top of my head I've also got a stainless steel handrail in here and another two cup holders down there as well and there's at least room for another adult up beside me and you've got you know you can sit here and have a conversation with the with the helmsman whenever you're underway and um, the condition of everything in the cockpit is pretty much perfect there's no tears in the upholstery that I can find no stains or anything no discoloration no stitching coming apart it's all really nice original condition it's color coded to match the pinstripe on the outside of the boat as well um, and it's in beautiful shape the only thing I would say lets down the cockpit slightly are the carpets because they're just getting to the sort of end these are the original factory carpets so the 2004 carpets and I find that we used to sell rinker boats and I actually have a 2006 rinker myself and I find that this sort of time now after about eight years or so the carpets just start need replaced but it's not a big deal and it's not particularly expensive either um, and the main problem is the carpets are pretty good but the back of them they're rubber backed and the rubber backing just starts to degrade you can see and you start to get this dust coming off them and there's nothing you can do about that um, other than replace the carpets but they are serviceable they work they're all there and they look they look pretty decent but just if you're whenever you're using the boat that that dust starts to get a bit frustrating after a while but apart from that everything else in the cockpit is perfect there's a nice helm position on the boat uh, first of all we got a great uh, pedestal helm seat fully adjustable it's got a flip up bolster here um, and it's a high quality seat we've also got the Larson original Larson steering wheel sort of leather and walnut effect wheel with a five position tilt adjust on it so it's easy to get a comfortable steering position whether you're seated at the helm using the bolster or standing up um, the dash itself then has everything you need on a boat of this size got this walnut effect um, inlay in it and we've got a full bank of uh, switches for all our 12 volt gear plus full array of marine instrumentation so we've got a digital depth sounder here and we've got temperature gauge oil pressure speedo digital taco uh, with an hour clock on there so we've got currently 590 hours on the clock um, fuel gauge battery volts and, and trim gauge as well there's a remote control for the stereo up here so you can control the stereo um, from the helms position and it's okay. perfect work on order um, we've got switches for our trim tabs so the boat has two trim tabs on the stern just to help it get on plane at slower speeds and also um, make sure you can keep it level if you're running a crosswind you can control those from the helm here and they're all working well then we've got um, switches for our navigation lights, bilge pumps, uh, horn, dimmer switch, accessory power and things like that. So um, everything seems to be in good, good work and order here and the condition of it, of it all is, is very nice. In terms of electronics, 
the boat is fitted with a Garmin uh, GPS. So it's a combination unit, GPS, chart plotter and sounder. It's a GPS map 188C. Um, let's just power this up here for you. So you can see it's in, it's in good working order. Um, and uh, it's a handy thing to have. So you can plot your route whenever you're out and about. You can find your way home after dark and things like that. And we've also got a Silva S10 VHF radio here over the port side. Again, it appears to be in, uh, in good working order. So that's a nice little suite of electronics, which is going to be perfect whether you're using the boat inland here or, or around the, the coast. Um, in terms of the controls, the throttle shift lever is falls easily to hand over here on the right hand side. We've got a molded in or integrated uh, cushioned armrest here but just behind it. Um, everything's within easy reach. You've got a nice raised foot rest just down below the helm here and you've got clear visibility through the windscreen um, whenever you're uh, in the helm seat. So it's command and helm position. You are sitting a little bit higher than the back seat passenger so you can get good visibility all the way around the boat. Um, and that Merrick Cruiser 5 litre MPI engine that's fitted to this boat makes 260 horsepower, gives the boat a really good turn of speed, it gets up on the plane quickly, it runs right up to 40 to 44 miles an hour um, and uh, tons of power there for pulling skiers or if you just want to cruise along and um, doing a bit of sightseeing or you know heading off to, uh, to a little bay or something you can comfortably cr cruise at around about 25 miles an hour and it's economical to run at those sort of speeds as well. There are a couple of other little bits and pieces of equipment I just want to point out. One is a remote control spotlight on the front of the bow. So we can switch that on from here and control it as well. It's in perfect working order. It's a really handy thing to have. If you're coming into the marina after dark or maybe you're you know, even entering an unfamiliar harbour, you can sort of find your way in. And we've also got a windlass on this boat so we can raise and lower the anchor from the switch here up at the helm. And again, that's all working. Uh, perfectly. Little switch for engine blower motor down here working well and we've also got a, a cup holder there at the, the helm position. There's also a nod to sort of traditional navigation on the boat as well so we've got a little chart table area here up on top of the dash, a little clear screen on it so you can have your paper chart up there as well as your Garmin down here and we've got a, a Ritchie compass there too so even if your electronics um, let you down you've got provision here for uh, traditional navigation. We have a big centrally located engine hatch, lifts up on a couple of gas assist struts and gives access into a very spacious engine bay. There's loads of room to uh, to work around this engine, even to store some stuff up at the front of the engine bay there. So the boat's fitted with a Maricruiser 5 litre MPI multi-point injection engine. It's turnkey starting, very refined motor, um, definitely a good match to this hull. Um, it is fitted with a Bravo 3 uh, stern drive that, as we've seen. Uh, and it gives the boat great, great turn of speed. Gets it on the plane quickly, keeps it on the, on the plane down to low speeds uh, and runs the boat right up to an excess of 40 miles an hour. This one, as you can see, is in immaculate condition. As I said, this boat spent the majority of its life, as far as we know, in fresh water. Certainly for the last number of years, the last two owners have definitely had her only in fresh water. And um, you can tell that by looking around the engine bay. There's no corrosion. Even on the front pulleys, they look really clean. The engine bay is nice and clean. There's no rust stains from any of the transfer fittings or anything. Everything looks really good. All the service checkpoints are handy to get to on the engine. The gearbox, oil, bottles over here, the engine dipstick there. The engine has just been fully serviced and winterized um, about a month ago. So it's um, ready to go for the, for the 2016 season. You've nothing to worry about that way. Um, and it's in beautiful running order. Um, in terms of other bits and pieces, you can see we've got a chlorifier over there on the port side. We've got our twin battery box set up. We've got a big um, polyethylene fuel tank in the up, runs up the floor of the boat. Macerator pump over here, holding tank with a Y valve set up so you can either empty the tank um, via a vacuum fitting on the side of the boat or overboard if you're in an appropriate area to do it. Um, big battery charger and fire extinguisher mounted up there as well on the bulkhead at the front of the engine bay. But the condition of this engine bay is excellent and it really paints a picture of how well the boat has been looked after 
over the course of her life. It really is in a, a, a great boat in very nice condition. To get access out onto the foredeck of the boat, you need to have the cabin door closed over and we've got three steps. These are all moulded in and with non-scale tread on them and we've got this little walk through, out through the open windscreen section, out onto the foredeck of the boat. Another little handrail here, plenty of handrails all the way around this boat. Another wee stainless steel handrail here to help yourself get out. Up on the foredeck we've got a nice, sort of fairly flat area, we've got these moulded in handrails here so you could throw down a couple of towels and sun, sunbathe out here. Uh, but what I want to show you here is this nice flat area up at the front of the bow. We've got foot switches here for the, for the windlass, so you can control the windlass from here as well as from, from the dash. Little protective covers go down over the top of them. Um, beautiful stainless steel uh, bow rails all the way around. Nice stainless steel plate for the spotlight to, spotlight to sit on. This boat's also put of that stainless steel anchor. Um, and a really practical setup for mooring the boat. To get into the cabin then, we just slide the, the cabin door back. It slides nice and freely on the top and bottom runners. And then we've got three steps down into the cabin here. The cabin layout is your typical American sports cruiser arrangement. So we've got a decent sized galley on the port side as you come down into the cabin. 
um, heads compartment over on the starboard side. We've got a forward uh, convertible uh, sort of V-berth dinette arrangement up at the front, and then we've got a pretty decent sized aft cabin and underneath the, the stairs there. So as I said, on this boat, because she's only 24 foot seven, she's a huge cockpit. It means you lose a, a small amount of space down here in the cabin, but it's really just up in the berth arrangement here. We'll take a look at that in a moment. But for all your sort of usual stuff, like the galley's a great size. There's over six feet of headroom here as well. I'm standing at the galley. We've got a good sized heads compartment as well and a great sized aft cabin. So I think they've done a great job of making the most of the room that's in this 24 foot, seven inch hull. Fantastic cockpit plus a really good cabin arrangement. Um, taking a look at the galley first of all, it's well set up for extended periods of time on the water. You could easily go away for a weekend or you know long weekend on this boat and you know service a family of four from this galley. First of all, we've got a sink here, little chopping board cover over the top of it. Nice deep sink. This is a Corian countertop or Corian effect. I think it's really Corian actually. Um, throughout hot and cold running water here, sink head pulls out as well if you're washing things down. Um, we have a integrated uh, single burner alcohol and electric stove so you can run along off electric whenever you're plugged into shore power or alcohol whenever you're um, away from the jetty. This little cover, this wooden cover was a, a, a retrofit item by one of the previous owners and I think what they used it for was setting up a little camping gas stove so rather than messing around with the alcohol which is, can be a bit of a, a nuisance if you're away from the from the jetty you can just get yourself a wee simple single burner camping gas stove that uses the little camping gas bottles that are much easier to use and manage and you can set that up on here the little feet that they come on and do your food preparation on that um, but it's a nicely it, it's a nicely done uh, piece of work it's a lovely little cover there and, it, and it's They've recessed a couple of holes in it here, so it sits on these screws, so it doesn't move around whenever you're underway, and it's a um, good little thing to have. Below the counter, then, we have an isotherm dual voltage refrigerator, so it works on 12 volt or 24 volt, depending on whether you're plugged into shore power or not. It's in nice condition. Um, we've got our microwave oven here, which works whenever you're plugged into shore power. And then there's tons of storage as well. We've got a huge big locker underneath the sink. So that's going to swallow up lots of gear. Another little cupboard down here, just below the shore power control panel. So this is the panel for ice turning on and off your main shore power and coming supply whenever you're plugged in. Then you've got individual switches for your sockets, um, the electric stove, the microwave, the fridge, the water heater, TV and stuff like that, and the battery charger. This boat's fitted with a Clarion uh, stereo CD player, a marine grade one. It's in perfect working order. We saw that up at the helm. I don't know why they always make it so hard to find the power buttons in these things. But uh, yeah, it switches on there. And... It's working really well. With the remote up at the helm. Um, some more storage across the top of the galley unit with this little uh, raised rail so you can keep odds and ends safe up there and we've got another cupboard here as well um, so as i said the galley is in, it's in lovely condition really doesn't look like it's seen too much use at all and um, this big handrail the stainless steel rail is handy too if you are down here whenever the boat's underway you can hang on to something um, and it's a high quality build well finished and, and still in really good condition up in the forward dinette here, there is room for probably four adults around this uh, removable table. This uh, You can take this out and use it out in the cockpit as well. Um, but there's plenty of room here for four adults. Really good sitting headroom all the way to the front. This boat's fitted with this little TV uh, DVD player as well. I think it's uh, 240 volt. I haven't had a chance to test it yet because I haven't plugged in the shore power. But um, it lives here. There's a DVD player plugged in over there. There is a little aerial thing, I'm not sure if that's up to date with a digital signal, but it's here and it's great for watching DVDs for kids and things, you know, during the day or in the evening, they can come down here and stick on a DVD and keep themselves entertained. Um, we've got these little overhead uh, sort of reading lights up at the, uh, the front of the boat, spotlights on the roof, another little reading light up here. Um, we've also got a hanging locker here too, so a nice cupboard with a hanging locker in there for getting some life jackets and coats and things out of the way and then this area 
converts to a, a sort of berth at night time. So you remove the table, put in a couple of filler cushions, and you make this whole area up into a bed. Now, because you have so much space out in the cockpit, I find that this is slightly shorter than you'd find on some other 24 and 25 foot cruiser. So you'd probably end up having to sleep across the ways on this boat as opposed to lying four to aft because I'm just not sure if you'd have enough length there. But I mean, it's a small sacrifice to pay. This could be where the kids sleep. The aft cabin could be where the adults sleep because you get a queen size berth in there. It's loads of room in there. But I, I mean, very small price to pay for what you're gaining in, in space out there in the cockpit. So condition wise, everything in here is beautiful. There's no marks that I can see. The woodwork's great. The carpets are really good. All the upholstery is perfect as well. Uh, and the headliner, everything's nice and dry. No leaks from any of the windows. Everything's completely bone dry throughout the cabin. And like I said, it doesn't look, I would say this boat has been used mostly for sort of day use and entertaining outside as opposed to um, sleeping on but um, that means you're just getting a fresher fresher example that hasn't been used as much in here. Recessed under this um, step coming down into the cabin you have a good sized removable bin so you can use that for your rubbish and things that's under the way and you can lift it out easily to empty it and then to get into the aft cabin we just come in through this opening behind those entrance steps so as you can see We've got a very good sized aft cabin here. We've got two overhead ring lights. There is an opening port light out into the cockpit just behind that curtain there. So you can open that up for a bit of natural light and ventilation. It's a queen sized bed, extends across the full width of the boat. So there's lots of room in here for a couple of adults to sleep, sleep very comfortably. You can see we've got the filler cushions there for the V berth. They're stored down in there along with all the camper covers are stored down in there as well. But um, at night time that makes a, a great double berth and you can screen it off from the rest of the cabin with this little hanging curtain too. So um, yeah, that's where, I mean, this would be the master cabin, so to speak, in this boat. That's where you're, the owner's going to sleep. Taking a look then at the heads compartment, um, you can see it's a good size. We've got a proper uh, pump out sea toilet. Uh, we've got a little sink and vanity unit there, hot and cold running water. The sink pulls out and doubles up as a shower head. You can mount up here. Um, the whole compartment is lined and drained. There's a little port light there. Open a port light for a bit of ventilation. Um, little shower curtain here pulls across the door when we're in the shower to keep the, the rest of the cabin nice and dry. A little bit of storage behind that mirror. And then we've got a full length mirror on the door here as well. So no shortage of mirrors. And um, that's a great thing to have again if you're staying on board. Say for a weekend or a long weekend, you need to be self-sufficient whenever it comes to toilet facilities, and this this boat is. Um, so, little controls for the for the head system, the sump pump and stuff as well. So, everything in there is really nice condition, and uh, it's a great little heads compartment. The boat has two sets of covers, so it has a flat tonneau cover for storage and towing, and then it has this full set of camper covers. These were renewed a few years ago. They're not original to the boat, and they're in very very good condition. It's a proper set of full campers, so extended bimini top goes all the way to the back of the cockpit with this vertical aft curtain on it, so you don't lose any headroom inside the, uh, the cockpit whenever the covers are up. We've got this opening door section on the back at the transom walkthrough, so it's easy to get in and out of the boat whenever the covers are up. And then we've got all the side panels, two side panels on each side, plus this forward screen section, so you can fully enclose the boat. You get full standard headroom right the way up to the helm position. And there's loads of headroom here, even for taller people. You're gonna have no problem moving around the inside of the boat. As all the zips are there, all the buttons are working, um, all the little clips and catches are all in really good condition. Um, a good set of camper covers is really important on a boat of this type in this part of the world. And this boat ticks the box. It has a lovely set of camper canvas covers. As I said, this boat is trailerable and it comes complete with this Snipe UK spec twin axle road trailer. It's a bumped trailer which I prefer on boats of this size because it spreads the weight of the boat more evenly across the quay and it also just makes it a bit more secure whenever you're towing it on the road because it is a big lump of the boat and you want to have it sort of securely fastened onto the trailer. So it's a great trailer. I towed it myself about 50 or 60 miles. It towed a dream and I would, I would have no hesitation in sending that boat you know, throughout the UK or even further into Europe on that trailer. It's going to make transport really manageable and cost effective. So if you're looking at this boat from further afield, 
it's going to be a simple cinch to transport it to you. Um, and then you have the benefit of being able to store the boat on the trailer over the winter. You don't have to pay extortionate marina charges and things. And if you fancy trying out new cruising grounds, it's easy just to hook it on the back of the 4x4 and head off. So um, that's a fabulous trailer and it's in immaculate condition. It's hardly ever been, it's virtually only ever been in salt fresh water. So there's no corrosion or anything. It's in, uh, it's in great shape. So that's our Larson Cabrio 240. Um, this boat is in fabulous condition. Hopefully you can see by now, it's been really well looked after. Um, fresh water use only. It's got a great motor. It's been fairly well used with 590 hours on it, but it means it's been taken care of. It's been serviced regularly. And it, you know, just looking around this boat, I can tell that she has been uh, definitely well cared for. It also has a great spec with that Garmin uh, combination unit, GPS, chart plotter and fish finder. We've got a VHF radio on there. Got an anchor windlass, remote spotlight, complete with the trailer. It's got that Mercruiser 5 liter MPI engine, the Bravo 3 drive, and it's um, got those camper covers as well, which are also in fantastic condition. So all in all, I think it's a great package. She's gonna make a great buy for someone. She's competitively priced, I think, um, and she's ready to go for the 2016 season. So if you're interested in the boat, if you want to come and have a look at it, or if you have any questions about it, please don't hesitate to get in touch. The best thing to do is give me a call, or you can follow out the callback request form on this page of our website, and I can contact you at a time that's convenient, or send me an email to sales at gulfstreamshop.com. Thank you very much for watching.